Yo, what's up? Good morning. My name is Petrowski, and today we're doing something inefficient in Pokemon for the name of science. I'm going to be EV training this beautiful tentacle here that I made quite a while ago once it was brought into the NU tier. It has rapid spin, which is a really annoying egg move to get on it. 4 times 31, 28 speed, calm nature, which is correct. Uh, and I definitely didn't accidentally gain some EVs by battling this trainer right here. But today, I'm going to be EV training this thing with the training link. And that's somewhat inefficient because I'd rather just gain the XP on top of it. Training link is nice because you double the EVs. But it's honestly nice to just go ahead and get the XP in my opinion. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to be keeping it level 1. And then I'm going to be heading over to Tentacruel in Hoenn. And we're going to be seeing how fast can we level a Pokemon from level 1 all the way up to level 100. However, we do need to keep in mind that this answer will not actually be the same for each Pokemon. We quickly need to cover something called growth rate. Now, experience points and growth rate is a bunch of math mumbo jumbo, and we don't care about that. We hate that. But the main thing you need to understand is that there are a couple different types of essentially leveling speeds for a Pokemon. There is erratic, which is the fastest, fast, medium fast, medium slow, slow, which is what our tentacle is, and then fluctuating. What does that mean? Let's talk about it. It really just means that it takes more XP for certain Pokemon to level up all the way to level 100. A really infamous example of this is Fluctuating, which contains Breloom, one of the most popular Pokemon in Pokemon Mo. So if we follow down this graph, we can actually see down at the very bottom, it takes Breloom 1,640,000 xp to get to level 100 what does that really mean well the average pokemon takes around this takes around 1 million 60k so breloom is essentially leveling one and a half pokemon to level 100 on average now today we are leveling a tentacle or tentacruel which is right here this is going to require 1.25 million experience to get to level 100 so it's a bit on the slower side i'd say most pokemon will be around this number it's kind of the in between the average around 1 million 60k or even around 1 million or so most pokemon are going to be between here to here these sort of three columns and just in case you're curious and wanted proof here is the tentacruel pokemon database page showing the growth rate Right here, if we essentially just zoom in, crop it down like this, we can see its growth rate is nice and slow. But that is everything we need to get started. Now we know that it's going to take 1.25 million experience to get this thing to level 100. I'm going to go ahead and go EV train this thing appropriately. Fun little fact, if you want to make yourself a tentacle or a tentacruel, I'm actually going to make sure to put around 20 speed EVs on this thing uh, at an attempt to be able to outspeed Garchomp since it has 102 base speed uh, versus my tentacle being uh, 100, I believe. Tentacruel ends up being 100 base speed. I'm actually going to have to put more onto mine if I want to have that as an option since mine is 28 speed and not 31. So surprisingly enough, having that 31 speed on a tentacle actually matters quite a bit if you're trying to outspeed someone like Garchomp. So definitely keep that in mind and don't be like me, prioritize the stat a little more. And now using my handy dandy advanced speed calculator, which is an awesome website, by the way, for Pokemon statistics, I found out that I'm going to need 32, as you can see over here, 32 EVs with a 28 IV to be able to outspeed a Garchomp. Now, it's also really important to keep in mind, I probably didn't should have prefaced this earlier, I'm looking to outspeed a tank Garchomp only so this is only a garchomp that is like 252 special defense 252 hp or whatever i want to be able to ice beam him and i should be able to do enough damage uh, and survive his eq at least once i assume but we'll probably calculate that essentially um i'm trying to outspeed tank garchomp that's it that's that's it because um i'm never going to be able to outspeed jolly choice scarf garchomp right i'm never going to get close to that so the only thing we're trying to do here is just put in a couple of speed evs just 32 to be able to outspeed um 102 base stat just tank flat out garchomp all right now our speed evs on tentacle are done 32 speed EVs, as you can see beautifully right here i'm gonna head over now over to a marl spot to do some hp ev training and then i'm actually gonna end up dumping the rest of the evs after the 252 hp uh into defense usually a lot of people would go 252 special defense on tentacle but once again the point of this is meant to answer guard chomp i was mostly an nu pokemon but i wanted to be able to slot in and essentially be a guard chomp counter and if i go 220 defense evs it'll actually allow me to live an uh, a tank Garchomp earthquake which is exactly what I want uh, it'll end up making him do 86 to 96 percent damage on a roll um, versus um, 
if I don't go any, it does like 109% plus or whatever. So that'll be perfect. That'll essentially allow me to go ahead and live a tank Garchomp EQ uh, and counter it pretty effectively. Rapid spin its rocks, uh, get some huge damage off with the ice beam and be able to uh, chip it down. All right, I just finished the EV training. I think it's time to stop the dilly dallying and head over to Hoenn Battle Frontier. Let's go kill a ton of Tentacruel to level up this Tentacruel. All right, it's finally time to start leveling this Tentacle. So I'm going to take note that I'm not using Donator status, so I'm not going to be able to get the max amount of XP earned, but. I am going to be popping an XP charm for this, an XP charm 100%. That's also important because this is essentially going to double my XP speed, but it's also going to allow me to have a timer. So once I pop this, I'm going to use that as sort of the first hour for the challenge. I don't know if this is going to take one hour, two hours. I'm hoping it's done in less than two hours. I'm sure it kind of will be. I'd be really surprised if this is done in less than an hour, but I honestly don't know. It's time to figure it out. I'm going to pop this charm and just play as efficiently as possible for this time period, and I'll get back to you guys whenever I'm done. All right, yo, what's up? Here should be the first clip worth noting. I'm around 15 minutes in. Uh, obviously, my tentacle did evolve into Tentacruel. Didn't think that was really worth showing, but there we go. That's level 50 achieved, so it's really easy to look at that and say, oh, you know, I'm halfway there, but I'm actually obviously not halfway there. I have to look at the actual XP gain. So I'm 15 minutes in. I've gained a total of 156k XP. It actually shows me right there, if you hover over, 156k out of 1.25 million. Um, so I'm like, what, 10% of the way there? Uh, this is going to take multiple XP charms. That is, I'm going to guess, actually, maybe I'm incorrect. If we do 156k times 4, that'll be one XP charm, right? That'll end up being, what, 300k, 600k? So, we'll, yeah, this should take around two XP charms level 100 surely is a grind okay i will say i think i'm actually about to make a kind of interesting change i'm going to change up my strategy and i'll show you guys why and how uh essentially right now so i'm actually going to go ahead and fly over to kanto i'm going to head over to victory elite 4 and i'm actually going to start using my tentacruel to start surfing down the hordes there you see if tentacruel is the one killing the hordes i'll get all of the xp versus if i'm using galvantula to kill the hordes um i'm obviously splitting the xp in half now currently uh both pokemon are each getting 6k xp at the tentacruel spot the tentacruel spot is great because it's one of the best spots for xp in the entire game however this spot is gonna be pretty great because i can actually just go ahead and use my tentacruel to you know surf uh and spam down the pokemon here i should be able to one shot them all i'm trying to think i don't know if i need specs on it or maybe uh mystic water i mean i have one lying around i'll go ahead and throw that on there i don't think i'll need i'm pretty sure i'll do enough damage but we'll go ahead and check it out i'm gonna test here let's go ahead and see the spot's also just pretty cool for shiny hunting i would love a shiny sand slash if possible but i wasn't sure if i should make this change i really thought about it for a while i thought you know do people want to see me just truly um sort of level i guess by xp share and level consistently the whole way but i think the the answer i came to was we already know it's going to take around two hours. We know that answer. If I stay at that spot, it's going to take around two hours, and we just already have that answer. I thought it would shake things up and make more things more interesting if I sort of changed the strategy and truly stuck to my title of I'm trying to level a Pokemon to level 100 as quickly as possible through traditional means or through normal means. This is how your average player is going to level up their average Pokemon to level 100, right? I'm not going to sit here and like spam XP candies and, uh, you know, rare candies and just spend a ton of Pokemon and that's not what most players are doing so i want it to be a realistic representation of the average player you know leveling their pokemon to level 100 pokemon and i think this is still decent and fair and this is what most people do now i'm doing like what 10k 90 look at that 10k xp from one horde on a on an xp charm for tentacruel this is going to be so much faster uh, i'm really excited for this i have no idea like how much faster this will be and that sort of breaks that oh it'll just be two hours lol forehead this will be a really good representation of shaking things up and i don't know how long this will take so i'll see you guys with any important milestones Okay, I'm not going to lie. I'm pleasantly surprised by this change. We have 10 minutes left in our richest charms. I'm rushing back down to get more encounters. And my tentacle is already at level 85. That is super, super solid. 10 minutes. I don't think I'll be able to achieve level 100 within, you know, the one hour. But 
we got pretty close. I wonder if I actually came here sooner. If I knew ahead of time, if I planned ahead of time, if I really planned things out, I wonder if it would have been possible to get level 101 Riches Charms if I, you know, maybe put like Choice Specs or something on my tentacle. It has the speed, but I probably could have come here at like level, I want to say 40s, 30s with Choice Specs and surfed everything. These guys all have really low special defense stats, so if I only came here sooner, I might have been able to do it in one charm. All right, as you can see, the charm is coming to an end in five seconds. I'm going to end off around level 92 for Tentacruel. Now, this is not RuneScape. Level 92 is not halfway there. So we are actually pretty close to being done. I'm at um, essentially 1 million XP. I'm actually at 1 million XP uh, or, you know, 250k XP away. Now, if you think about it like this. If this Pokemon was a normal speed Pokemon needing 1 million XP to get to level 100 or maybe 1 million and 60k or whatever it is, right? You might have actually been able to, or there's a really good chance, you definitely could be able to reach level 100 on an average Pokemon within one hour on a 100% Rich Charms. That's really good. Um, this is something that would take, without the Rich's Charms, would take four hours doing the previous method. If you stayed the, at Tentacruel the entire time with Galvantula in the lead and XP sharing onto Tentacruel, it would have taken four hours. This is why XP share is so good and why I keep talking about it. I made a video about a month ago. By the time this comes out, about a month ago talking about it, um, Rich's Charms costs what? Or excuse me, not Rich's Charms, XP Charm. Excuse me if I'm if I'm saying the wrong thing. XP Charm costs, I think it's around, I want to say 40k at the moment. Um, at least for 100% Charm. It might have gone up for 100% Charm. It seems like around 50k or so. Let's go ahead and... So we see right here, it's at 50k or so for an XP Charm. That's up the price. If this saves us like an hour to two hours of time that is unbelievably beyond well worth it right if a gym run we earn 300k pokey in in one hour essentially if we're earning more than that or something that we're costing is saving us more time than that it is so unbelievably well worth it so i think xp charms are extremely worth your time because they are going to save your time and then allow you to have that time to make more money or do other things in Pokemon Mo. I got a very funny comment recently where someone left a comment on a video of mine saying, oh, the only reason why Rich's Charms are super worthwhile to you is because you're rich. And that's not true at all. Time is money. If you value your time, if you can spend more time making money, this is not a rich or poor thing. Rich's Charms are, excuse me, once again, XP Charms. XP Charms are just good if you want to save time. If you have the 50k for them, I would just go ahead and buy them, save the time, and you can go spend that time making hundreds of thousands of Pokey in an hour. You can literally start Pokemon Mo from scratch, head over to Pidgey on Route 1 in Kanto, and start making around 100 to 200,000 Pokey in per hour. I've made plenty of videos on this. It is very easy to make tons of Pokey in really quickly or really early on in Pokemon Mo. You do just have to put in the time and effort. But that's enough of that side rambling. I'm going to head back to the PC. I'm going to heal up really quick. And I'm actually just going to go ahead and pop a 50% XP charm to finish this up. Because I think that is realistically what a player would do in the situation. I don't think the average player is going to pop another 100% charm just to gain this little bit of extra XP. A lot of people might not even pop a charm here. They might just go ahead and continue uh, to just get the level 100. You know, they're pretty close-ish. I'm going to pop a 50% charm. I think that's reasonable. And I'll see you guys whenever it's done. We're going to pop it like that there we go i'll see you guys at what time we reach level 100 all right and here we are this should be the final encounter at around 45 minutes so it really lined up pretty well this will get my tentacle to level 100 finally figuring out that it seems to take around one hour in 15 minutes with multiple different uses of charms and kind of multiple different methods and everything so keep that in mind if you want to use uh xp charms to expedite your process, you could get a level 100 Pokemon. This is also a slower leveling Pokemon like we talked about earlier with the growth rates and everything. A slower Pokemon in like an hour and 15 minutes. That was really good. I'm actually really, really pleasantly surprised by that rate. Um, you could easily do an average Pokemon in around one hour with a Rich's Charms 100%, I would guess, at good locations, um, which is a really, really big deal. It's really important that level 100 Pokemon shouldn't take forever, but they should be a grind. It should be difficult, but it shouldn't be a six hour grind, you know? And I do think. The worst ones, if you were to level a level 100 Breloom from scratch 
without XP charms, without donators, etc. That might take you six hours. So please, if you find yourself needing to level a Breloom, which a lot of people need to for a catching Pokemon, remember to use Riches Charms. They really are super worth it. They really are. They really do save so much time. They're not just for rich players. They're quite cheap considering all things, which may sound harsh to a lot of people, but I think it's important to understand. You can make Poke in pretty easily in Pokemo. It does require game knowledge. It requires game knowledge and it requires time and effort. And I can hopefully provide the game knowledge to you guys with my videos. If you ever have any questions or something is left out, please let me know. Feel free to critique me politely. I'm, I'm super, super open to that. Um, but always, you know, put in the time and effort yourself. And I, I know you guys can do it. Anyone can grind. Anyone can go hard. You truly can believe in yourself and it'll happen. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if it was helpful to you and you want to see daily Pokemon videos. I upload a video every single day at 10 a.m. EST. I stream Monday through Thursday at 12 p.m. EST on, on uh, Twitch as well. That'll be linked down below. Discord is linked down below. And if you want to go above and beyond and get your name featured at the end of videos like this one, um, go ahead and become a YouTube member for five bucks a month. Twitch Prime, Twitch Sub, or PayPal slash Venmo donations do help out a ton as well that's it for me have a great day i'll see you guys later peace hey if you're watching this that means you watched the entire video which is pretty crazy so thank you so much for your time and thank you for that and if your name is on this list that means you're a pretty cool dude thank you for going above and beyond and supporting the channel and allowing me to make videos or more content like this one thank you again